Oh, you think maybe to sell us a ticket back to Denmark, yeah? Well, we don't go back. With God's help, we go on. Not so fast, friends. I, uh, I guess maybe you didn't read the fine print. Article 7, interest on money advance for passage. Let's see now, that's, uh, 5% for three months. That's another $487. Yeah, it says. After we buy stock and wagons, there's left almost nothing. Maybe you want... We should starve on the road. That's not my problem. All I'm concerned with is the interest. Ooh. After you are dead, I think maybe you too will pay interest. Don't forget to write me about them free lands around Cimarron City. They think they got trouble now. Wait till they get there and find out there ain't no free land. Across Denmark, we could have traveled since we left St. Louis. Hmm, how much longer, Jens? <laughs> you asked me that less than a mile ago. Christian, you have less patience than a child. Oh, yeah, and why not? We are all children here. Everything is so strange and so new. Oh. It would be good to sleep tonight on our own land. Yeah. <laughs> Some help? Well, if you got something we can use for a lever to lift this up high enough to get that wheel on. I do not think that would be necessary. Otto! Yeah, yeah. Merenganga. Mommy, why does that man talk so funny? Oh, Cynthia, where are your manners? <laughs> now the child is right. In America, we should speak only English. But now we work. Otto? Yeah. No. Now I've seen everything. Much obliged. You're welcome. Now, if you will permit me. What did you say? Why, I said I hope we meet again.
Afternoon, Beth. Hello, Lane. Hi, Lane. You hang around here much longer, you're liable to take root. Hmm. Two hours late this time. You know, we could build a railroad in the time that stage takes to get here from Tulsa. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I've got to drop in the office first. And if the stage hasn't come by then, I'll ride out and see what's keeping it. Fine. Bye, Beth. I'm sorry, Beth. Hey, why don't you go on back home? You know, those boarders of yours will probably be hollering their heads off for dinner soon. They started that five minutes after breakfast. I'm in no hurry. You don't have to feel obligated, Beth. After all, you've never even met Emmy. For that matter, neither have you. Well, no, but I was her husband's closest friend. After he passed away, I suppose she just never had anyone else to turn to. I think that's them coming now. Sounds like he's sure trying to make up some time. Isn't that just like Hank Thompson? Two hours late and tries to make it up in the last two minutes. I sure hope she likes it here in Cimarron City. Oh, I'm sure she will after she sees what the town has to offer. Well. Emmy Barton. Welcome to Cimarron City. Matt Rockford. Well, I'd have known you anywhere. Howard spoke of you so often. That's quite a compliment. I've thought of Howard a great deal, too. And you must be... Now, don't tell me. Cindy? Cindy? Ah, uh, Sid, Sid... Ah, what is it? My name is Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia! Well, now, if you're gonna be as formal as all that, I guess you're just gonna have to call me Uncle Matt. Now I'd like to have you meet a very close friend of mine, Beth Purcell, Emmy Barton, and Cynthia. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. Matt, will you get the luggage? I think we'd better get going. Come with me, Cynthia, Mrs. Barton. Pretty little thing, even if she is kind of peaked looking. <laughs> Don't you be fooled by those fancy widow's weeds. Did you see the way she looked at Matt Rockford? And there's his buggy. He'll be taking her out to the ranch, just as bold as brass. <laughs> it's scandalous. Well, here we are, Emmy. Beth runs the finest boarding house in the territory. I thought that is you wrote that we'd be staying at your place. Well, now, Emmy, you'd be perfectly welcome to it. Uh, well, I, I just got to thinking that you'd be mighty lonesome out there with no women to talk to. Uh, what Matt means is that this might be a small town. But we have some of the biggest gossips west of Chicago. Oh. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, this love seed. Howard and I had one exactly like it back in Washington. He used to say he wouldn't trade it. If, if you don't mind, I'd like to go to my room now. Of course, come with me, Cynthia. I'll bring him up in a minute. I'll come down to the room. Mm -hmm. How is she, Beth? Oh, after a rest, she'll be all right. She's had a rough day. You mean a rough year, ever since Howard died. He left her a little property, but that rent money sure doesn't go very far. Well, Matt, some people have started on less. Meaning you? <laughs> Look, Beth, it's not the same thing. You've always been able to take care of yourself. Maybe that's because I never had a Matt Rockford to lean on. Or a child to bring up on your own. Now, Beth, I'm, I'm afraid she's going to need some help. Don't we all? But in Emmy's case, Matt, I think um, you've been elected. <laughs> Let's say we both are, huh, Beth? Yeah, yeah. You leave 
buds are getting smaller or the climate's getting drier, Frank. Fill her up again. Hey, fat boy, didn't you see we're dry down here? Looks to me like you've had enough, Hogan. Amount of noise you're making. Don't you want our money? I don't mind you stopping by on your way through as long as we don't have any trouble like the last time. Oh, just a little fight now and then. Keep things from getting dull. Full of beer, gents. Small beer. Well, like so. Otto, we do not have money for beer. You tell us, please, where is government land office? Sure you don't want a drink first? You look like you've been traveling. No drink. We, we want land office. We come from Denmark to get our free land. You must have the wrong town, mister. No land office here. There ain't no free land left around here, either. How can this be? I think he make joke because we don't buy drink. No, this is no time for joke. We make long, hard journey now. Please to tell us where is land office. It's no funny to tell us we make journey for nothing. This is a saloon, mister, not a traveler's aid station. <laughs> if you're too cheap to buy a drink, here, have one on me. I said no drink. Where are you, square head? I wouldn't pick on the old man if I was you, Hogan. Uh, thank you. We don't need help. We fight our own battles. Well, it's just trying to keep the odds even, that's all. Odds is already even. I don't. You get out of my way, please. I shouldn't have let that Hogan in here again. All right, all right. Fight's over. Put him down. I said put him down. Hogan, I warned you before. This is a peaceable town, and I aim to keep it that way. Well, why don't you quit picking on decent citizens and tell them furniture where to get off? Come barging in here like they own the place. Just looking for trouble. He speak lie. We ask for office where they give away free land. This man say there's no free land. Free land? Near Cimarron City? Yeah, for farm. Yeah. Immigration agency tell us. Well, I suppose someone's got to tell you. Aside from a few dry mesas that won't even grow cactus. The only free land around here was taken years ago. There's not a square foot left. Running a ranch this size must be an awful responsibility, Matt. I feel guilty keeping you from your work. No sense in being boss if you can't take a day off now and then. <laughs> Besides, I want to take a look at a little spring I've got across the hill and some grassland. The cattlemen usually like to stop over there and rest their herd on the way east. Yeah. Two bits ahead a day, it mounts up. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to do some business today after all. You're not going to make much money from one, two, three, four steers and one calf. Those aren't steers, Emmy. Those are dairy cows. the head ramrod around here? Boss, the head man. I am Christian Larson. I make you welcome. Well, thank you. I can explain that. Hi, Lane. I rode out to see you this morning, but you'd already left. Oh, Lane, I'd like to have you meet Emmy and Cynthia Barton. Howdy, ma'am. I was sorry to hear about you losing your husband. Well, we're all glad that you've decided to make Cimarron City your home. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Barton and Cynthia, I'd like to introduce you to Jim Larson and Yen Seedengarden. We have already met. Well, these are the men who fixed the wheel on the stage yesterday, Matt. Oh, and this is Matt Rockford, the man who owns this land. How do you do? Glad to know you. 
Mr. Larson? I didn't think you'd mind me giving them permission to stay on for a while, Matt. They fell for that old free land dodge back east. I telegraphed the authorities in St. Louis, but that's not going to help them out much. It's been pretty rough on them. No, there is no need to make excuses, Mr. Temple. Well, now, hold on. Nobody, nobody says you're not wanted. We pay to rent. It is cheaper in this country than to get for free. No, that's not necessary. We want it so. Well, that's the way you want it. How's five dollars a month? That is if you, if you stay here that long. Five dollars? We don't got. Is it a uh, fair price? Very fair, Jens. He generally gets 20 times that much. Well, don't worry about it. If you don't have it now, you can pay later. We pay now, you make bargain. All right, thank you. Well, I'll see you folks later. We don't sign paper yet. Well, now that's not really necessary. Handshake is enough. Well, we, we like it better if we sign paper. Don't worry about that. Matt Rockford's never gone back on his word in his life. We shake. Uh, with the uh, option to buy for later, huh? Well, sure, sure, that'll be fine. Uh, anytime you can scrape together $50,000, uh, well, the place is yours. As a matter of fact, I'll apply the, the rent money to the purchase price. Good. Now, will you stay for some coffee, huh? No, thanks. We're late already for dinner. Oh, by the way, if you can make use of that lion shack, it's yours. It might be more comfortable in there for the women and children. No, no, it is your building. We couldn't afford to pay rent for it, so we wouldn't use it. Well, suit yourself. See you later. So Bye. long, Ray. Goodbye, little Engel. <laughs> she is pretty, isn't she? It's too bad you're not going to be living here for good. Oh, we will stay. Yeah, it's much better this way. Much better to pay than to get for free. Pay? You mean you're serious about buying this land? Yeah, we make bargain with Mr. Rockford. You yourself were witness, you heard. Well, yes, but I also heard the price. How in the world are you going to raise $50,000? Ah, we will work hard. We'll pay. And then no one can take this land away from us. Yeah. This is our home from now on. do anything. All she does is sit around and talk about Howard. Well, if it bothers you so much, Matt, why do you listen? Well, now, you know why, Beth. Howard was my closest friend. I know your closest friends. You keep telling me that. But are you sure there isn't another reason? After all, she is a very attractive woman. Well, now, just what's that got to do with it? <laughs> well, if you don't know, don't expect me to draw you pictures. Oh, come on now, Beth, be serious. We've got to help her. We? 
All right, then you. You know, talk to her, snap her out of it. One woman to another. Thank you for remembering. Remembering? That I'm a woman, too. I uh, bring the eggs and butter. <laughs> oh, uh, would you like some nice Danish pastry here? Yeah? I don't think so, Mrs. Larson. Tuesday night is apple pie night in this house. Oh, <laughs> well, I see you then on Friday. Huh? Right. Bye. Oh, I almost forget. This for little girl. Oh, a gingerbread man. <laughs> Cynthia will be so pleased. How very kind of you to think of her. Oh, not me. Was idea of Jens Siedengard. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jens Siedengard. Mm -hmm. Emmy, it's time you and I had a long, serious talk about Cynthia. Cynthia, was anything wrong? I'm simply shocked. She's only seven years old and already receiving presents from men. Delivered by a special courier from one Jan Syngard. Oh, this is a surprise. Mm, smells good. She can have it for dessert at lunchtime. Dessert? Oh, that reminds me. I was planning on serving Danish pastry for dessert tonight. I won't have time to whip up anything with the lady's aid coming. Well, maybe I can help you out. You know, Howard used to say I made the best apple pies oh, in the whole world. that's very room. nice of you, but we don't have an apple in the house. Oh, I was planning on serving the pastry. Well, well couldn't you send somebody for it? Emmy, what a wonderful idea. Thank you. And besides that, the fresh air will do you and Cynthia good. Just what the doctor ordered. Oh, no. oh hello, Matt. Hi, Beth. Is Emmy around? That's what I like, the subtle approach. I sent her and Cynthia out on an errand. They've gone to the green country. You let them go out there alone? Well, you make it sound as though I sent them into a nest of Comanches. Yeah, but Beth, Emmy doesn't know the country. They could be lost. Well, then she just gives the horse his head and the horse finds his way home. Yeah, well, it may be dark by then. I, I think I'd better go out and get them. Well, suit yourself. Is there anything that's safer than a smart horse? It's a stubborn mule. Welcome to Little Denmark. Place has much changed since the last time, yeah? Yes, I can hardly believe it. You must have been working very hard. Uh, well, it is much better to work hard for the future than only to worry about what is past. Oh, I see not everybody agrees with me. Mommy, hmm? is the little cow talking to us? Ah, he would like to be your friend. Would you like to pet him? His hair is like silk. He's a young prince of the finest Hereford blood. His papa is our prize bull, Hamlet. He likes me. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Why? Because he knows that you like him. It's the same with all young things. Little baby chicken. <laughs> And hair like anger. I think she maybe takes from her father, yeah? Your father died last year. Yeah, I know. Sometimes we talk about you among ourselves after supper. I'm sorry if I bring back your grief. I am much more sorry for your husband. Yeah? To leave the sun and the grass? to lose so soon those he loved? And now, where he is, to see always tears? Does this make him happy? Please, I don't want to... He must have been a very fine man to have such a family. Excuse me how I speak, but... does he not now say, if he can, 
enough? No more sadness, begin to live a little, maybe? Yeah, and maybe it's better for the child, too, yeah? Forgive me, it was not my place to interfere. No, I... No, I'm glad... Glad you did. It made me realize how false and empty it was getting to be. These clothes, like an actress. Oh. Now you are being too hard on yourself. Was not alone an inky cloak of solemn black? Why, well, that's from Hamlet. You know Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, I graduated from university at Copenhagen. I saw the great play four times. In the castle at Elsinore. Why, well, I don't understand. You're an educated man, but... Why, you're your friends. They're just poor farming people. No. No one is poor who goes out to find freedom. These people I meet on the boat. You see, Germany takes from Denmark the province where I am born. And when I refuse to serve in their army... Well, all of that is now behind. Now I think maybe we get a nice glass of fresh milk for little Engel, yeah? <laughs> and maybe just a little piece of gingerbread man? <laughs> Well, she was here just a minute ago. Maybe she's hiding. We find her, yeah? <laughs> Cynthia? Cynthia? Here, chicken, chicken. Here, chicken, chicken, chicken. Here, chicken. Come on. Don't cry, little chicken. Don't cry, little chick. Little chicky. Don't cry. Don't cry. Cynthia! Oh, honey, are you all right? That was pretty careless of you. She could have gotten hurt. The bull is harmless. Now, look, there's no such thing as a harmless bull. I raise Hamlet from calf. He is used to children. Yes, but not this child. I suggest next time you keep an eye on her. Oh? Is your place to tell me that? Yes, I think so. I am responsible for her. Oh, and maybe for mother, too, yeah? <laughs> well, for the time being, I'd say yes. Yeah, so that's it. You don't like to see another man talk to her. Well, now, please. I think you're just a bit out of line, mister. And I do not like the way you talk to me. You think because you own this place, you can keep me from being friends with Mrs. Barton and talk to me any way you like. Well, you're wrong. We make bargain. And as long as we pay rent, you have no right to be here. What? Now go and don't come back. Just a minute. I say go. Now, you get them on out.
What do you people think you're doing shooting up a man's herd? Well, they cross plowing. We sow oats. This is cattle country. You can't fence in that water. Well, we rent land, we work hard, pay good money. Just what's that over there? It's foundation for a new barn. Foundation for a new barn? Look, a few cow sheds and temporary buildings are one thing. But I didn't figure you folks stay in forever. Sorry, there'll be no new barn or any permanent buildings. Yeah, we understand. And another thing, no fencing of that water. The cattle have to get to it. Oh, well, now we see. Mr. Rockford, you are a big man. You have power and friends. You think you can push us off this land because we don't yet sign paper. But let me tell you this. Soap and water do not wash agreement off this hand. <laughs> nerve of them, Beth. Practically telling me to go fly a kite on my own land. Now look, I tried to be fair, but I bent over backwards to help them out. I guess they just don't understand our ways, that's all. I guess that's how the Cherokees felt about the time your father and his friends showed up. Now look here, Beth, that's not the same thing, and you know it. Fencing water in cattle country, why, I've, I've seen men killed for less than that. Well, Matt, why didn't you explain this to them when you rented them the land? Rented? Look, Beth, I never intended to rent it to them. I only meant to, to do them a favor, to let them stay on while they made other plans. I felt sorry for them, that's all. I gave them an inch, they took a mile. It's as simple as that. Admit it. You're not mad at all the Danes. Just Jens. And just why should he be different? In one word, Emmy. Oh. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when Matt Rockford could be spooked by a little competition. Oh. Competition? Well, the way you talk, you'd think I, I was courting a girl or something. <laughs> Methinks the gentleman doth protest too much. Oh, I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Jens, but I was thrown off schedule by some last-minute shopping. Oh, it's perfectly all right. I see new chapeau is <laughs> very becoming. Oh, this is just a present from Matt. But what held me up was buying this. Oh? I hope it'll fit. For me? Mm -hmm. Emmy, you shouldn't spend your money so foolishly. I, I already have a hat. <laughs> that is, I uh, used to have a hat. <laughs> oh, my. Uh. Oh, no. Hmm? Uh, mm -hmm. I think we go. I could have sworn I saw Yen's wagon coming down the street from my bedroom window, but when I looked out the door, he wasn't there. No, I saw him, too. He went around the corner into Matt's office. Oh, don't worry, Emmy. Matt never shoots anybody before lunch. That's it, Jens. I'll write out a receipt for you. No, no, no receipt. Uh, we shake hands, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Folks are catching on quicker than I thought. Well, we try. Mr. Rockford, I... I tell Christian I bring money today because... Well, because I hope there are no hard feelings. No, there are no hard feelings. Good. Now, Christian comes here next week to make signature for purchase of land. Purchase of land? What land? Yeah, we buy your land. Oh, come, come. You can't be serious about that. Yeah, I'm serious. We... We invite bankers, they say we are good risk, and they make us loan. $50,000 is a lot of money, but we pay off. <laughs> and that's ridiculous. There just can't be that much money in Danish pastry. Now look, I, all I did was uh, offer to sell as a joke. Everybody knew that. Well, then I think maybe joke is on you. We buy next week when bank gives money. Now, wait a minute, Jans. I'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding. Look, th this is going too far. You would dishonor your word. I am sorry for you, Mr. Rockford, to have so much and be so little. To be a liar and a cheat. We want to sign paper, you give us hand. Now I think I give you mine. Now look here, Jens, this is misunderstanding and... Now, 
you're gonna listen to reason or... Beth, why are they fighting? Why? They're fighting over you, of course. You just don't understand. No, no, they have to get it out of their systems. You're both satisfied. Of all the disgusting sights. Please, Emmy, not just now. Yeah, we we have enough fight for one day. And what did it prove? Fighting like like wild animals. Well, maybe some women would consider it an honor, but I don't. Look, Emmy, it's not what you think. We were we were we were just. I've never felt so cheap and humiliated in my life. Well, you can fight all you want, but somebody else can have the winner. Because I won't be there! I just saw Mrs. Larson. She tells me that Jens returned to the farm and he was very upset. Well, I'm sure he'll survive. Now, where's that yellow gingham? I don't know why you're in such a rush. The stage for Tulsa's already gone. Well, there'll be another one tomorrow. Well, you have plenty of time to make it. Why don't you stay and help us celebrate the 4th of July? Tiny Buttinger and Dodie Hamer are going to dress up like Minutemen and fight the Battle of Bunker Hill all over again with firecrackers. And the town council has roped Matt into making a speech. After which, no doubt, he'll challenge Jens to a bare fist free-for-all at the Oklahoma Saloon. I don't know why you're so hard on Matt. Jens admitted starting the fight. Oh, Beth, that's what makes it worse. He was always so kind and gentle. He even came to America because he didn't believe in violence. If, if Cimarron City can change him that much in three months, what do you think it'll do to an impressionable child like Cynthia? We just don't belong here. A woman belongs any place where she's loved and needed. And I mean, there's one thing that will not change. No matter how far or how fast you run, how Cynthia grows up will depend upon the kind of man you pick for her father. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy. not firecrackers, and this or any other building is going to spend the rest of Independence Day in the pokey. They sure don't hoop it up in this town like they used to. They sure don't. When I rode in this noon, you know what them stand of hoofians was a doing? Working. That's what. Just like the 4th of July was the same as any other day. What? They wasn't even getting drunk. No, that ain't even patriotic. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Hold on. You can't expect a bunch of foreign folks to know about American celebrations. 
<laughs> what they need is somebody to go out there and learn them how to be real Americans on the 4th of July. <laughs> yeah, let's go get them rockets. <laughs> Good night, Jens. Good night. Ah, <laughs> Ken. It's a beautiful night, yeah? Yeah, it's beautiful. But I think not so beautiful for one. As for two. <laughs> Go to her, Jens, before it is too late. No, Karen. To marry, a man needs more from a woman than just love. He needs trust, understanding. Unless Emmy can find these in her heart. Well, perhaps she does for Mr. Rockford. Whites of their eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Yeah? Uh, wh what is it you want? Oh, just a neighborly visit, that's all. You see, we're celebrating a holiday today. The 4th of July? Uh, that's how come we're dressed up like we are. It's really Independence Day, but seeing as how it always falls on the 4th of July, well, we always just refer to it as the uh, 4th of July. Uh, anyhow, seems how you fellas are all strangers here, we figured we'd come out and show you how we celebrate in this here country. You're gonna like it, it's lots of fun. Watch this. Let her go! Off land. Everybody out of buildings! No, 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 this is just our way of celebrating Independence Day, ain't it pretty? <laughs> That's for the Boston Tea Party! Hooray for Boston! Give it canoe and Tyler too! We didn't mean to start this. Fire! Fire! Everybody bring buckets! Well, I didn't figure on anything like this. The whole place is going up. Yeah, me neither. We gotta help them. Come on! is our freedom as individuals, the personal right to pursue happiness in a manner of our own choice. Tiny and Doty tell me, you folks let your warehouse with provisions for a whole winter go up in smoke. But you saved that lion shack of mine. Well, it was not a hard choice. Until we sign paper, land and buildings are still yours. As long as we only rent, we have responsibility to protect your property. And besides, we are no worse off than we were when we came, and we have money for rent. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to terminate that lease as of now. Why, why, of all the ungrateful, the despicable things I've ever heard of. 
Yeah, and it's taken me a long time to see things as they really are. If you still want me, I'd be proud to marry you now. And we'll go away as far from Cimarron City as we can get. Would you please stop acting like an outraged woman and listen for a change? Since three of our most patriotic citizens got you folks into this mess, uh, well, the rest of us feel that we should help you out of it. Besides, we haven't had a real good old-fashioned barn and house raising around here in a long time. This another of your so-called jokes, Mr. Rockford, to, to build a house and barn without land? No. What about this land? Seeing as how it's a little scorched here and there, I guess I'll have to hold a fire sale. I'll let you folks have it for exactly what it cost me nine years ago. $7,500. Hey, well, let's say uh, $10 a month. He says go, and he means stay. He won't take money for rent, only for buy. This, this America, sometimes I, I do not understand. In some ways, I guess I didn't either. Till I started looking for material for this Independence Day speech of mine. On the base of the Statue of Liberty, there's a, there's a poem. It goes like this. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to be free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless, the tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Welcome to Cimarron City, neighbor. Well, what do you think about that, neighbor? What'd you say we go to town and get us a beer? Yeah? Sure, we make dogs. Just a small one. <laughs> <laughs> practically children at the church. You look very cheerful. Well, let's just say that, uh, that I like weddings. Naturally, for anybody except yourself. Just a minute. I think I smell a rat, a rat named Matt Rockford. You wanted her to get married. You planned the whole thing from the start. Well, let's just say that I got her back into circulation. You know, I had a hunch, Matt, that if you thought I was serious, you'd do the rest. <laughs> yes, Sam, I never thought I'd see the day when Beth Purcell could be spooked by a little competition. 